Hello. Hello, um, I'm Kenza Thomas and I'm going to be talking to you today about some of the research I've been undertaking with Maldives Resilient Reefs and Blue Marine Foundation um, as part of my master's project for the University of Exeter. So the aims of the research um, were to describe and quantify the activities of the fisheries from seven islands within the atoll, more specifically uh, the proportion of immature fish that were being caught, the use of gear and how that relates to the proportion of immature fish being caught, interactions of lunar phases with some species and the catches, um, and the location of fishing across the atoll. Uh, so in the background to this research, uh, coral reef fisheries um, were estimated in 2014 to support 6 million people worldwide. Um, and in similar regions, they provide 99% of the protein and 80% of income to coastal households. Uh, they're currently unregulated and unreported, and therefore their impacts uh, are likely underestimated, um, but they do tend to be multiple gear, multiple species and multiple landing spots, which can reduce abundances of fish throughout life stages um, and therefore affect their ability to replenish their population. Uh, in the Indian Ocean, 65% of reefs um, are thought to be affected by overfishing. Um, and in Lamu and the Maldives specifically, um, there's a recently established reef fishery um, which is supporting increasing tourism and the growth of resorts in the region. So the data was collected by local fisheries officers from seven islands um, and they collected data from November 2021 to February 2022. Uh, they were trained in how to identify the fish um, and measure and record their length um, and they were also trained in how to use location maps to locate the fishing effort. Um, so all of the landings uh, were that were into the harbour were recorded for five days of the week, so Monday to Tuesday and then Thursday to Saturday to account for recreational fisheries um, and also during peak times, so 7 till 9 in the morning um, and 8 to 11 at night. If the species that were landed were schooling, um, the officers were instructed to take an average length of 10 of the fish from that catch and then estimate the overall size. Um, the biomass could then be calculated by taking that average length and multiplying it by the estimated catch size of say 300 fish. Um, when they were recording the fish length they were also asking questions about the type of gear the fishermen were using, the fishing location, the timing of the trip and how long the trip lasted. Um, and then when it came to the data processing, um, fish base was used to uh, get the length rate relationships to calculate biomass for each species and then to find the length of maturity um, two thirds of the maximum length documented on fish base for each species was taken as, as the length of maturity. Uh, just a brief definition of the gears. Um, the ones that are most important is the troll lines, so lines that were towed behind a vessel um, sometimes had hooks and they're sometimes baited um, and jigging gear um, is usually used in squid fisheries but it sort of goes up and down to attract the fish um, and also popping gear is an important one where bait is dragged along the surface of the water creating a popping sound and attracting the fish. In terms of results um, the catch composition by numbers was dominated by big eye scad um, with over 78% uh, of the catch being being them by numbers. However, when you look at by weight, um, they're not big ice scout aren't big fish, so they didn't they didn't dominate um, by weight. This is dominated by giant trevally with 24%, uh, and then Luchanus boha, which is 21%. Um, then we broke the catches down. Um, so by species, it looked at the proportion of the juveniles. Of the total landed catch, 52% of them were in, immature. Um, and of the top 10 species, species landed, six of those species had over 50% of the catch being juveniles. And the giant trevally, great barracuda and big eye scad had more than 90% of the catch, less than the length of maturity, which could be a potential area for concern. Then we looked at the proportion of juveniles that were caught by gear. Um, so 
the majority, so the worst ones, so troll lines, had 80% um, probability that the fish would be a juvenile by popping gear at 79% and then spear guns at 68%. So those ones are the worst for catching juveniles. We then looked at the interaction of uh, gear and probability of being a juvenile uh, by species. So for uh, the sailfish on the left, the, um, the, of all of the catches of nets, 100% of them were juveniles. Same for spears, popping and jigging gear. Um, whereas if you look at El Boha, um, the were caught by lines, only 50% of them were juveniles. So it does vary um, by species. We then mapped the landings by island. You can see that Marva on the left there um, landed the, the most amount of biomass by kilograms, followed by GAN. Um, then we looked at the biomass that was being removed from the reefs around the islands. Uh, again, Marva quite high, the reefs around there, but also Mabaidu um, on the right also having high amount of biomass being removed from those reefs. Then mapped the number of trips. Uh, again, high amount of trips um, visiting the areas around Mabaidu, um, but also Mamendu and Hitadu as well in the bottom. Um, so that's this look, we'd like to look at the relationship between those. Uh, then mapped the catch per unit of effort. Um, for each of those, so took the biomass for each fishing ground and divided it by the amount of time that the fish were, fish, fishers were spending in the fishing ground. Um, and it seemed to be more important in the of the fishery um, with places like Dambidu, Mabaidu, Mamendu, Hithdu, Fonadu, Marva, all having high catch per unit of efforts, um, but also the uninhabited islands um, on the northwest of the atoll also receiving high catch per unit effort. Uh, I then plotted the lunar interactions, but there wasn't um, for the for the species that I could plot because I had enough data for them. There didn't seem to be a relationship between the lunar phase um, and the overall catches. So to conclude, um, Big Ice Gad um, was dominant in catch numbers, probably due to bait fishing. Um, and a lot of the time it was caught by nets. So um, sort of they could take a whole shoal um, at once um, and therefore the numbers are higher. Um, there's some evidence of growth over fishing in uh, Boha, Atkinsoni, Salandri, Big Ice Gad, Giant Valley. Um, with over 50% of the catch being less than the length of maturity, but um, more concerningly, potentially, um, Big Ice Gad, Giant Valley um, and Great Barracuda had more than 90% of the catch being less than the length of maturity. Troll lines were most likely to catch immature individual fish. Um, Marva having landing lots of biomass, but also having high amounts of biomass being removed from the nearby reefs. Um, and Marmandu, Hithidu, Mabaidu and Dan Badu receiving trips as well. But then when you plot um, the duration of the fishing trip alongside the biomass, that seems to be important in determining the productivity rather than just biomass alone. Thank you for listening. Um, I think Shah will, will take questions now. Thank you.